guys you're welcome back again it's your favorite brothers from ghana and then today we have a special brother in town and this man here is doing an amazing job but before we get to the point where we talk about what he's doing you know on our diaspora chat, chat we talk to our brothers who have migrated all the way to ghana and then we let them share their experiences with us we want to know how the transition has been like and then they also inspire other people to move in he goes by the name Mr. Eric, but today we are going to give him a Ghanaian name because he's met the brothers from Ghana, so definitely he needs to get a Ghanaian name. Hey, I, I have one. Oh, you, have a, you have a Ghanaian I'm, I'm name. I'm Sunday born, so I'm crazy. Oh, and today is your day, it's Sunday, <laughs> so you're crazy. So we are going to talk to Mr. Crazy today. We want to know about how the transition has been, how long you've been in Ghana, and then how you're, you're, you're going by our Ghanaian culture and all. So, first of all, welcome to our channel. My name is Kofi. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I know it's been so long we decided to meet, but right. finally we are here today. Hey, there you go. Yeah, yeah, so in Ghana. I've been in Ghana for over seven years. And um, you've been in Ghana for hey, over seven years and oh. I and since I've been here <laughs> I haven't I haven't been back to the US uh, even to visit since I've been in Ghana. Do you think you're still qualified to to be interviewed as a diaspora? Uh, I, I know <laughs> you know. I got I got my Ghana card now. I'm a citizen. So now you're Ghanaian. Yes, yeah, so I, 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 I made my citizenship I guess, uh, yeah, December. I guess we are just two Ghanaian brothers here <laughs> coming to have a chit chat. There, there you go. I, I eat all the local foods. I eat the bush meat. Uh, I eat the, the mampong. The grass cutter. Did you say you uh, too? Yeah, I eat the mampong. <laughs> I, <laughs> I eat the food, food, the banku, coke and tain, akpale, light soup. Uh, let I eat all, it all. Let us all clap for Mr. Kesiri. <laughs> <laughs> you are doing the most. <laughs> you are doing the most among all the diasporas we've met. You are the one telling me you've really been in Ghana hey, because you are eating all our local you, foods. You know, when I uh, moved up and when I first got here, I found land in the mm -hmm. mountains and moved in the bush. And uh, the locals were like, hey, oh, Bruni, why are you moving in the, the bush? Uh, you, you know, you're crazy. And uh, then they used to say, oh, you're more Ghanaian than we are. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Of course, obviously, you're more Ghanaian than some of us are. But for us, we are, we are, we are Ghanaians more than you are. So. <laughs> so they say, oh, uh, okay. you know, I eat, you know, even the snails. And, Whoa. Uh, you wow. know, yeah. So, wow. I'm, so I'm, I'm going to take you back a little bit today. What inspired the decision seven years ago? That led me to moving here? Yeah. Um, you know, I visited... Uh, I visited... For the first time, I visited uh, the African continent uh -huh. in 2015. Okay. And I came October 2015 and I spent an entire month in Ghana. That was my first time on the continent. And then you spent an entire month? And I spent an entire month okay. here, uh, yeah, in the, the uh, Laboni area. Whoa. And I was contemplating relocating. I said, okay, let me see if this is, you know, a place I would like to relocate to. Okay. And um, before I left that month, I had decided that this would be the place I would relocate to. Whoa. And uh, so that was October. So I met my family in December, and we all got together for Christmas. And I was like, "Family, I got an announcement. I'm moving to Ghana." They, they thought I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask their reaction when you hey, said you're moving to. It's Ghana. like you're moving to Ghana when? I said as soon as I can. Whoa. And um, two months later, after that meeting, February 2016, I was flying to Ghana had sold all my stuff and I had an online business so I was able to kind of transition pretty good okay. and um, yeah I was on my way just wow. sold everything wow. and um, yeah so that's yeah I you know and they, they asked me they said well why do you want to why, why are you leaving and I said one I don't feel comfortable about the world economic uh, system right now I believe okay that we're, the world is headed for some kind of crash or something's going to happen and uh, I believe that it's going to be much worse in the United States okay. and uh, 
I want to be self-sufficient. I said, look how we live in the United States. We're not self-sufficient at all. And I said, if something were to happen, mm -hmm. there's only a few companies that control all of our food supply. You know, um, if the electricity go off, you know, what would we do? Okay. I said, but when I was in Ghana, the electricity went off occasionally and nobody started killing each other. Okay. Yeah. The weather is warm. There's food growing all over the country, you know. You yeah. drive down the road and you see fruit trees growing. I say, so I know I'm not going to starve even mm -hmm. if I didn't have a home there. Yeah. I, you know, I just crawl up a tree and get me some plantain and some coconut. Hey, I said, but here, you know, it's a different story. You don't see fruit trees growing here anymore. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so, you know, and I said, you know, basically, if you look at these uh, these tall buildings, these skyscrapers, mm -hmm. and you know when things are going very well, the people want to live at the top of those buildings. Okay. And they sometimes pay like three and four times more than the people living at the bottom of the building. Yeah. You know they call them the penthouse. Okay. I said now if you look at the world like a skyscraper building. Who would you say was at the penthouse? I say most people would say the West is at the penthouse. They're at the top and they would say uh, Africa is at the bottom of that building. And I said, however, the problem is that when that building catches fire, everybody at the top now want to be at the bottom. Uh, yeah. I yeah. said, and the problem is that you guys don't see that the fire has already started around the world. Yeah. So the building is already burning and a lot of these people, you know, that are in the West are going to soon be flooding out to try and get to places like Africa in the East. Because I said, you know, when you look at Africa, it's completely decentralized and there's no one or two companies controlling all your food supply, you know. Um, so things are just decentralized and in the West, things are centralized. So if those companies let you down, Man, you're gonna, you're gonna you gonna catch it. Yeah. So I said, you know, when I went to Africa, I just felt so comfortable, um, and you know, I hate cold weather, and so Ooh. Africa was just, you know, that was just like heaven to me. <laughs> no, it's just a perfect yeah. for you to come. Yeah. I was like, this is my kind of weather, my kind of people. I love the people, mm -hmm. and the people they wouldn't know that I wasn't Ghanaian if I didn't open my mouth yeah you know so <laughs> it's only when i speak that they say oh bruni but yeah. uh, i look just like them and you walk down the street and everywhere you go you see somebody who looked like somebody back in your community your neighborhood yeah. at home so yeah. i was like this is where uh i belong and um my my brother did like a dna test mm -hmm. and his test came back saying that uh we uh, our blood seems to come from uh, Ghana, Nigeria, and Cote d'Ivoire. Whoa. So, so, as far so, as I'm concerned, yeah, this yeah, is home. Yeah, that's home. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's how I, I got here. Just a concern about the future. And um, I ended up building a house uh, not too far away from here okay. in the mountain. And I, I, got, I found five acres. And... Uh, I wanted to be completely off grid, yeah. so I had a borehole drill. I had solar put on the house. I had an organic farm with animals running around. So when COVID came, it didn't affect me at all. My family was calling from the United States saying, "Eric, maybe you have a point because <laughs> it's getting scary here." Yeah, and yeah. Um, they're rationing food, and I was like, "Well, family." You know, I didn't know what was coming, but I just felt something in my spirit that it was coming to the world. And, um, you know, and so if you guys need to come to Ghana, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't be coming back anytime soon. Whoa. So Whoa. that's why I've been here. I was supposed to ask you how your first month experience was. But you moving in for one month and then packing all your stuff, coming back, I think it was an awesome experience. That's oh. why you just had hey. to go hey, pack was... all that stuff and leave the family there. Hey, I'm going to tell you, it was awesome. And uh, yeah, and maybe I shouldn't say this, but man, in the 
the ladies are pretty. <laughs> and so that that wasn't bad either. I was like, oh, okay, hey, man, maybe we've been cheated in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> like hey everywhere you turn you know All right, but so it's, it's just so many you know like if you look at the United States mm -hmm. you know as big as it is that's uh, you know maybe I guess uh, uh, you know 12% 12% mm -hmm. of the pot 12 13% of the population is African American yeah so you know so um, it's like uh, 30 million uh, African Americans across the whole country of mm -hmm. some 300 million people, people yeah. so um, when you look at Ghana you got that 30 million right here yeah. in you know what's the size of one state, uh, state yeah so everywhere you look you, just and, you know them. so yeah so so the women are all attractive and they're approachable you okay. know so you walk down like I was staying in the Laboni area and uh, <laughs> you know every you know I could walk in I could speak to, uh, start speaking with somebody, mm -hmm. and I could ask them, you know, a woman, and ask them for their phone number, and they gladly give it to, yeah. to me. Now, um, so out of 10, <laughs> 10 females that you speak to, maybe eight of them will give you a phone number. Okay. In the U.S., out of 10 females <laughs> that you ask for a phone number, maybe two of them will give it to you. <laughs> So that's a little different. This is, this, is, this is a big plus to our, our beautiful Ghanaian women. You're doing an amazing job. And if you just join the chit chat, this is a diaspora chit chat of brothers from Ghana channel. We have our brother here, Eric, who has moved in into Ghana for the past seven years. He has really transitioned very well. And then he has one of the biggest projects, housing projects going on currently in Ghana. I know one of the biggest headaches for diasporas when you guys are moving in is accommodation where to stay where to settle so yeah. our brother here has moved in from the states he's been here seven good years he knows all the ins and outs of this country and then he has a project for you guys who are planning to move in who have already moved in and still looking for accommodation so currently that's where we are driving towards and then you will get there very soon let me show you some of the drive scenes the beautiful drive scenes as you get to where this housing project is going on This is the beginning of, of our property. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we have 200 acres. So here's our master plan of the 200 acres. Mm -hmm. And we are coming from the bypass road. Mm -hmm. and this building is that building right there. Okay. So we are going to go down and make a left. Mm -hmm. And we're going to the model home first. Okay. And then we'll go to the community. So, a um, few things to note is that, okay, currently we have about a 10 acre mango farm over here. That will eventually be removed for a uh, commercial area. So, we got future mixed use development. And um, then we have some more commercial area. Then we have the food forest in two areas. It's going to be 30 acre food forest, organic food forest, right in the community. Okay. Then we'll put uh, some lakes in here to contain the water that comes off the mountain. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a lake community. So um, we're using a concept. You see this circular mm -hmm. uh, image here with all the houses. We're using a concept from an architect from America called Pocket Communities. And he says that instead of building these rows of homes where people just have a backyard, then they come and get in their car and they leave, and they never get to know each other, he said a better way is to take a fewer number of houses and center them around a common courtyard area where people can come out and mix and mingle and get to know each other. So we were committed to this idea of pocket communities, and um, so this is what we're doing. We have four individual pockets 
that we're building. And I have a uh, larger image of the pocket. Mm -hmm. So this is a larger image that shows the pockets. Uh, one, two, three, four pockets. And we are currently building uh, pocket A, which is the first pocket. And pocket A, uh, we currently have uh, 12 buildings which uh, equates to 16 homes because some of those homes are duplexes so when we go back there that's this is what you'll see okay. is this pocket then we'll continue all right let's move so, so yeah so you know Ghana is sits at the center of the earth mm -hmm. you know it's the closest uh, country to the center of the earth and this land actually sits at the prime meridian. So it is oh. at the center uh, as well. You know, if you look on a map and you go through the prime meridian, take the prime meridian line, our land is at the prime meridian. Wow. So it's like very, very uh, sacred place for us. Yeah. Yes, very what, significant. So what, we're- What do you have there? So we're planting grass, you know, the, uh, if we just leave it, if we just leave the yards with this grass, it'll overgrow and mm -hmm. they can't maintain it. So what we're doing is planting a grass that doesn't grow as high okay. for the actual yard so that it'd be a little more manageable for okay. the homeowners. But um, one of the big things, as I said, is that you have edible landscaping so that everything growing around your house is going to be edible or medicinal okay. now you can plant uh, whatever you want to uh, in your own yard but um, we're gonna start you off with some foods like you know sometimes uh, I just come here and just grab uh, leaves off the plants like this is oregano mm -hmm. and oregano produces the most potent uh, natural oil that you can get People use it um, for all kinds of diseases, mm -hmm. and uh, I just chew it. Whoa. When you chew it and get the oil, you can see how potent the oil. Wow. My, my brother would taste that. I'm bad at <laughs> I'm bad at chewing stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> it is strong. <laughs> yeah, it's strong. I'm bad at chewing Look, stuff. I used to get so, one of these this season. <laughs> <laughs> they have a little less dust on them, but. Okay. So, okay. I'm just going to give it a try. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell us how it feels in your mouth. You're known for tasting stuff, so. <laughs> and chew it and see how strong that oil is. Yeah, it is. Are you sure you're enjoying it? I'm enjoying it. <laughs> so, this is the moment of truth. So, we've been making a lot of noise on the road coming. But now we are here, we're going to check out how this model looks like from the inside. So, come along, let's go. Whoa. Welcome, Whoa. welcome. Wow. Thank you, thank you. You know, you're in Ghana now. You've been in Ghana for seven years, so you have to say Aquaba. Yes, Aquaba. <laughs> I usually say that. I mean, that's it. Yes. That's it. So, can you please take us around? Yes. Wow. So, this is it. So, this is uh, not quite our smallest unit. This is our next to the smallest unit. Mm -hmm. It is called uh, Sankofa Duplex mm -hmm. One Bedroom. Okay. So we call it a duplex because in this building there are two homes mm -hmm. on each side of the building. Okay. And as you can see, some of the differences about our home is that one, we use real hard wood for the cabinets. Okay. None of that engineered wood and MDF, HDF stuff. This is real hard wood. Yeah. Uh, it's called uh, Cinderella wood, come from Ghana, and uh, it'll last a lifetime. Okay. And um, we don't really give the homeowners a choice to make uh, changes, okay. but they can choose whether they want a dark color stain or a natural color for okay. the wood cabinets. Okay. We also have granite countertops, mm -hmm. whether you know it lasts forever. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, in the U.S., a lot of people like wood floors, mm -hmm. so we don't use wood here because. The climate is hot and it's humid and wood tiles tend to warp and pop up. Yeah. So we get ceramic tiles that look like wood. Okay, so this is the ceramic tiles. 
Yeah, it's been designed like a wood, but yeah, yeah, ceramic. it's ceramic, so wow. it's solid and strong. Wow. Um, our windows, uh, you see a lot of these windows on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. these, this is not it. These are aluminum laser cut windows. They are very, they have a security grill, so Whoa. that's just not a net, it's that's a security like grill. Yeah. It's made of steel. Yeah. And they have tempered glass that's very hard, it's two panes. Yeah. And uh, they slide very well, so you can see that they slide very nice. Whoa. Whoa. And these are all made with wood. Yeah, this is aluminum. This is aluminum. Yes, it's, it looks like wood, but wood. it's aluminum. Okay. And okay. then you get the blinds okay. that are here. Um, you get the ceiling fans mm -hmm. come with it. Oh. Yeah, that's that's the ceiling fan. It's also made of wood. That wow. one. That's interesting. Yeah. So this is basically like your living room or something. Yeah, this is your living area, and then here yeah. you got your kitchen. Oh, that. Enjoy. Now the um, the first promo we did, the homeowners. They got everything. We gave them the furniture you sitting in. We gave them washing machine, uh, stove, refrigerator, bed. So, you know, they, they really made out why, like a bandit. Why, why didn't I hear about the first promo to get to all this? I, I don't know, but uh, yeah. Yeah, they, they made out like a bandit, but because of inflation now, this promo is still great. You just don't get the appliances mm -hmm. or the furniture, but you still get your hardwood cabinets. You still okay. get your granite countertops. You still get your ceiling fans. Yeah. And you still get your POP ceiling with the crown molding. You still yeah. get your blinds. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, so you still make it out very well. Wow. Um, so we can go into the bedroom. Now, and remember, all of this stuff you're seeing, we're making on site. Mm -hmm. Like these cabinets, we're making this stuff on site. So you guys are making all these things, yeah? Yeah, we're putting people to work. Uh, we got carpenters making this stuff uh, on whoa, site here. Whoa, whoa. So, owners, that they won't find in any other home in a cry, a Ghana. This type of quality. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, even the bed we made. You guys made the bed on site? Yes. Wow. So. This is so impressive. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, they're going to get the blinds with, with the unit. Okay. The blinds. Yes, the blinds and um, again, all of the wood in the door is real hard wood. One thing, one thing I, I must say I really like about this room is this door. This is actually with I frosty don't... glass in it. Of course, you can't see through. You can't see through. Can see through. Yeah. But it gives you access to your washroom and at the same time you can access it from the other side. Yes. Wow. Yeah, in the uh, US we call it a Jack and Jill type bathroom. <laughs> okay. So, the, um, yeah. You can just access it from this side. Yeah, so your company can come in and not have to go to your bedroom. To your bedroom, yeah. Yes. And uh, now another option that the homeowners get is they can choose between a bathtub or a walk-in shower. Okay. And the bathtub still has a shower in it. It has a shower, but uh, yeah. yeah, if you just want to walk in showers like this. Okay. You see, you know, we got nice tile, nice tile on the wall. And the little touches that we did is like even this fan, this extraction fan. Yeah. You know, a lot of times you go in the bathroom here mm -hmm. and you don't see the fan there. Yeah. But we put it, you know, nice uh, window, you know, mm -hmm. solid window. Yeah. Yes, upgraded fixture, you see, you know, we didn't, and this is still granite countertop even in the bathroom. We got granite countertop, real hard wood cabinet. Yeah. Yeah, so you come through here, um, you know, and then, you know, again, real hard wood cabinets, and here you got a water heater ooh, right there. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's a whole house water heater. Yeah, not just for the back. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, and you, here you got uh, the backsplash tiles mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. So, make sure uh, another nice thing. You got a deep, nice deep sink. Mm -hmm. So, we tried to, you know, 
give people a nice quality home. It's not, you know, it's not, uh, we're not trying to give them like this great big home, but we're trying to give them a quality home because they're moving here and they're trying to downsize usually. But if they want something, if they want something larger, we go all the way up to four bedroom homes. Whoa. So, you know, if you have a large family, we can accommodate you. Um, mm -hmm. But most people tend to like something small here. And then I'm seeing there's a CCTV camera up there. Yes, each home comes with a security camera and an alarm system. Okay. And we'll have 24 hour security as well. So okay. that people can feel secure. This is a gated community, you yeah. know, it's a gated community. Okay, so this is pocket A. Yes, so we currently have 12 buildings and that equates to 16 homes because some of these buildings have uh, are duplex, so they have two homes in them. So, but this is how it starts. You know, it starts to look just like this uh, before we plaster it. And those are compressed earth blocks uh, that uh, it's just like a modern day mud hut. I'm observing something here. Come closer, bro. Come. I'm observing something here. The, the usual, the usual brick we use over here in Ghana. I think you put <coughs> cement in between them. That's right. So yeah. you don't have to mod, uh, put mortar between these. They just stack on each other like Legos. So, so it is like a puzzle. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. So is it strong? It's very strong. Load bearing. That, yeah, it can carry a heavy load, okay. just like that. So, um, and then you come and you plaster over it so it lasts forever. But it keeps the house cooler. Yes, it makes sure we waterproof it properly. And our, that's right, and, and then there's another layer at the bottom. So these uh, foundations go about five feet deep. And then they come out the ground about three feet. So very strong foundation and depending on where we build the foundation like here this is uh we have a high water table okay. so we had to, you know so we had to fortify the foundation so we use these big stones so you know it's like a castle like foundation we could put we could put a story building on these foundations so very strong This, exactly, exactly, yeah. So, and, you know, and, and if we walk, we can walk through this uh, particular unit, and this is the same as the model home, which is a duplex, uh, same code for duplex, one bedroom. So you can kind of see before we finish it what it looks like. So, yes. This is the bedroom area, kitchenette, oh, okay. 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 and you come into your bedroom, and then you come into your bathroom, and there you go, you know, so it's going to look very nice when we finish. <laughs> now we'll go to uh, another one that's uh, nearly finished. Yeah, so using these compressed earth uh, bricks it keeps the house cooler yeah. and uh, you know uh, and this is the advantage of building with mud and the dirt so it's just a modern day mud hut and you see how the walls look when we plaster them a oh, so this was made with bricks. yes and wow. we just plastered yeah. over it wow. so you can't tell when you plaster it and that particular unit is a one bedroom single family detached home so if the person wants the whole yard by themselves and they don't want like a neighbor next to them they buy a single family home so that's what's coming up there and we go all the way up to four bedroom homes so you come here we you know we probably have some amenities for them here and like a little park area for the children to roam and these are no car zone these are car free zones here so uh, you know, yeah, so I mean, they still the uh, the road is like right here as a cul de sac, so the road ends right there, 
and each unit has its own parking space. You know, if it's a large home, it has two parking spaces, and if it's a duplex, it has one. So this is off the grid, but still you have people around. You have a community. Have You're going to have little shops here, markets here. Yeah. You know, they'll be able to, when we put the lakes in, they'll be able to put a little uh, canoe on the lake and go down the lake, you know. And a lot of uh, the communities in the West, people always fight over the cul-de-sac area when it comes to this little dead end. Around. They always want to live around this little cul-de-sac. So each of our uh, pockets have a cul-de-sac in it. So you don't have to fight over it. Everybody is, is around the cul-de-sac. So, yes. So we're gonna walk in this one. You can see the parking space. Come, we started planting grass. Here we started the lemon grass, and we got other grasses we started. So that's gonna start germinating and popping up in no time. Yeah, so you see some plants coming up there. We can grass. Yeah, we got the parking space ready. Nice, nice big yard. Even, even with your half, even if you're in a duplex and you just have this half, you still have a nice size yard. Yeah, this is duplex. This is the same unit as that model home, same unit as that one. So, yeah, so we're almost finished with this one. Uh, you can see we have a lot of dust because we've been cutting the granite countertops, and uh, let's see how far they've gotten. Hey, it's coming along. It's coming along. So, yeah, so they've gotten the granite in, and uh, this is somebody who wanted the natural uh, cabinets yeah. and uh, yeah so it looks very bright looks very nice and um, now we did change uh, something in this one in the original design we had the stove right here and some of the home buyers said they didn't like it in front of the window because it blows the smoke in yeah. so we changed it over here but when we did that we had to use extractor fans yeah. uh, so we just gave them these as a free upgrade and yeah, and we'll put them right there. Yeah, so, so Aquaba, this is our home here and it's coming along. Oh, I just walked right through, magic. Yeah, so they got the sink in I see here, the basin, it's looking nice. And this one is also gonna have a walk-in shower in this unit. So, yes, so we're, we're excited, we're very excited again, wardrobes are in. I think the one who did the best and who made the choice in terms of yes. natural color is super cool. You know, and, and, and um, this, and uh, the carpenter who's doing these wardrobes is a guy that was the apprentice on my home in the mountain. And he was an apprentice, and uh, yeah, back then. And so he went to Nigeria for a few years, and uh, we just stayed in touch. And so when we started this project, you know, we decided to bring him from Nigeria to work on this project. <laughs> and now he's bringing somebody in to, uh, to teach them. Yeah, so it's, it's great. And this is how you, you know, you build skill sets. And yes. Okay, so uh, our lowest uh, priced home, it retails for like 42,000 US dollars. And um, this one that you see, this model home that we, it retails for 64,000. However, we're running a half price home promo so that if you, pay everything up front and wait three years, you get the home 50% discount. So that means our lowest price home, you get it for $21,000 and this home you get for $32,000. $21,000. For a home in, uh, in a community with amenities in it. Yes, you just agree to pay everything up front and wait three years and you can't customize anything. So we choose everything for you. You just move in. Yes. Yeah. And also, you know, I, I have a surprise for you. 
uh, that if uh, they purchase between August and December, okay. they'll be entered into a raffle to win a free studio condominium unit. Let's take that one back again. We are, we are in September, right? Yes. So that is, it started last month. It started last month with our new promo that we started. Okay. Yeah. So it's still in existence. The promo is still happening. Yes. So if you purchase from now to, to December, December okay. the 31st, okay. you'll be entered into a raffle to win a free condominium studio. Condominium. Guys, I think we need to put money together and then buy one of these properties yes. and then and tie and win the studio. So it was nice having you, or it was nice for you inviting us over, and then it's been a nice experience. Very I'm a Ghanaian, I'm still impressed good. with the projects you guys are doing here. This is Ghana, this is still Ghana, this is Somalia, this is Eastern region, and this is what we love to see. This is what Brothers from Ghana is all about. This is our country. No matter what we do, we need to project it in a positive way. And that's what we love doing. What do you have to tell our, our fellow diasporans out there who are yet to move in? Oh, I tell them just come on, you know, sell all that stuff and just come <laughs> to Ghana. You Don't be afraid. You advise them to bring them. They should just sell it. Oh, just, just sell the stuff <laughs> and just come. Everything that you can get uh, there, you can get here. Okay. And save yourself the headache. You know, if it's sentimental, yeah, you bring it. But otherwise, you just bring yourself. You know, you want access to good organic food, we got you. You want access to a good community, we got you. And, um, you know, when you come here, it's nothing like being around uh, people with common interests. Okay. So, yeah, so if, if, if you've been contemplating, oh, I want to move to Africa, but I don't know where to go, migrating, coach you, crossing, we got you. And, um, you know, you can reach me. Uh, on my, uh, you can reach us on our website, mm -hmm. which is www.migratingculturecrossing.com. Okay. Or you can reach me. I also have a YouTube, mm -hmm. and uh, you can reach me on my YouTube yeah. at youtube.com forward slash Eric is free. Because, you know, I, ever since I've been in Ghana, I feel free. <laughs> so that's, that's what it, I say. That's it. that's it. Eric is definitely free. So we are going to put the links in there in the description. If you want to reach out to Eric, you can just reach out to him through the website, as he just said, or the YouTube channel. Thank you yeah. so much. And then... Hey, well, I appreciate you guys for coming. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. We can't wait to come back when all this project this is, is finished. complete. You're, you're invited anytime. Yes. Yes. So, this is your favorite brothers from Ghana. See you on our next video. Bye.